Hello, everybody, and welcome to a global celebration, a very special event to mark the extraordinary life of our founder, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, and to celebrate such an important part of his legacy. You, our international award family, all of you around the world achieving great things for yourselves and your communities. I'm Reese Stevenson, and I'm going to be your host for the show. I should probably add that I myself am a silver award holder too, so I know what it's like doing your skill and sport and volunteer and of course the hike, which in my case involves a deceased goat, don't ask. Now, what makes this event though so special is that it's the first time that we have brought together the entire award family. Participants, alumni, award leaders, volunteers, supporters, we're all here. We welcome people from all over the world, Canada, Turkey, Sri Lanka, Kenya, the Bahamas, Spain, Australia, Slovakia, I could go on, but we'd be here all day. We've got a packed show. So let's get on with it, shall we? We're gonna go on our own adventurous journey over the next 45 minutes or so with features, games, musical performances, and an interview with a very special guest. You'll notice a quiz box next to your screen. Now don't touch that yet, hold on. We'll be finding out just how much you know about the award a little later on. And don't forget to visit the photo booth. Just click the link, take your photo and share on your social channels and remember to include the hashtag WorldReady. Right, I think that's enough preamble from me. To kick things off, let's remind ourselves about what the award is all about. Every day, more than a million young people are finding their purpose, passion and place in the world. Learning new skills. Overcoming challenges. Working as part of the team. Making new friends. Exploring new frontiers. Learning to lead. Equipping themselves for life. In times like this, we learn what we are made of. What we can achieve. What we can help others achieve. Surprising ourselves with what lies within. Discovering there is more in us than we think. And learning that our potential is greater than we ever imagined. Millions of young people have already taken part in our work. Supported by volunteers in more than 130 countries worldwide. To inspire and enable young people to ready themselves for the future. To help them believe in the power of their potential. To create meaningful change in the communities and beyond to become citizens of this world, standing shoulder to shoulder to say, I am world ready. I am world ready. Je suis prêt pour le monde. I am world ready. I am world ready. I am world ready. I'm ready for the world. I am world ready. I'm world ready. I'm world ready. I am world ready. I'm world ready, are you? How has the award made you world ready? Share your story today at hashtag world ready. I am world ready. I'd like to repeat it again from the world highest peak Mount Everest. I am world ready. Oh, I don't know about you lot, but I'm pumped for the rest of the show having just watched that. You are truly inspirational and I'm thrilled to have some of you in the studio with me. Well, almost in real life. So hello to the award participants from across the world who are going to be with me throughout the show. Hi guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. Why don't we quickly whiz around the group uh, so you guys can introduce yourselves. So let's start from the top left. Uh, give me your name, where you're from and the level of the award that you are doing. Hi, my name is Yi Chen Li. I am from British Columbia, Canada, and currently I'm on my gold level of the award. Hello, my name is Timote. I am from Slovakia, and I'm currently finishing the silver award. Hi, my name is Vukumbi Joyandela. I am from Zambia, and I am completed my silver award. My name is Christian. I'm calling from Kenya, and I'm currently pursuing my silver award. Hi, my name is Dabi. I'm from Gibraltar, and I've completed all three levels of the award. Hello, my name is Anila and I'm from Barbados. I'm currently working towards my bronze medal. Hello, my name is Narendu. I'm calling in from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and I'm currently completing my silver award. Hi, I'm Lyra. I'm calling in from the UK, and I have completed all three of the awards. Hi, I'm Shalini, and I'm from India. I completed my goal last year, 2020. Hi, I'm Selena. I'm now living in Shanghai, China, and I'm currently completing the gold award. 
Amazing. Welcome to all of you. Uh, now, Timote, you are doing your silver award at the moment. Tell us about your award journey. Yeah, well, thank you for asking. I have a brilliant time doing a silver award, but I think the the part worth of mentioning is my uh, men, my my volunteering when I mentor uh, younger dancers in my folklore group in my hometown in Previza. Um, like we had a, we have a call every Friday, and we really build a special relationship uh, relationship during this time. We really like speak about the pandemic and how they feel and about and, and mostly about the dancing so yeah that's, that's the thing which really changed my life i think it's amazing you realize as well that you know this club that you do means more than just teach them to dance it gives them an outlet and an escape so well done congratulations on that now gabby you've done the award all the way through to gold first off that is very impressive and your awards journey though hasn't ended there because you're now training as an award leader and supervisor what made you decide to do that well i'd had such a, an amazing time throughout my award experience and Obviously, that wouldn't have been possible without the volunteers who gave up their time for me to do my award. So I want to give back and give young people the opportunity, the same opportunities I had to reach their full potential and build all these skills that we can achieve from the award. It's lovely to meet you all and we'll be coming back to you guys later on in the show. Really amazing. Now, before we go any further, we need to take a moment to reflect on why we're here. Today, June the 10th, 2021, would have been His Royal Highness Prince Philip's 100th birthday and we are still keen to mark his centenary. For millions around the world for whom his Duke of Edinburgh's award has been such an inspiring, empowering and transformative experience, we want to acknowledge our founder's achievements, especially his championing of young people and for pioneering what has become known as non-formal education and learning. Whilst His Royal Highness supported an exceptional number of causes during his lifetime, his passion for championing the infinite potential of young people was always at the forefront. In the early 1950s, Prince Philip identified a need to help young people tackle the challenges that they faced growing up. He believed that with greater confidence and resilience with life skills such as communication, problem solving and leadership comes a desire to create meaningful change. And so, the Duke of Edinburgh's award was born. And as we mark our founder's centenary, the award is determined to support as many young people as possible to discover their infinite potential and to ensure that our founder's vision continues to grow and inspire young people for decades to come. So let's take a look at a short film exploring the Duke's extraordinary life and legacy. an inspirational man without whom we wouldn't have the award and the opportunities it's given so many of us including me now earlier i promised you a very special guest and they don't come much more special than a member of the royal family he's a chairman of the awards international foundation and a gold award holder and a true champion of young people it's his royal highness prince edward welcome sir 
Thank you very much indeed, Reese. Great to join you. Great to have you with us. Now, first off, our sincere condolences from everyone at the award family. You're very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as we reflect on your father's remarkable life and legacy, arguably the award is amongst his greatest achievements. Now, tell us of the Duke's vision for the award and what he hoped that it would provide for young people. I think he was, well, he was always a great champion of, of, of young people's possibilities. And, and really what he wanted to try to do was to, to find a means to be able to in, inspire them um, uh, to get involved in, in all sorts of activities. But I think more or more importantly, to to empower them, to give them the chance to make their own decisions about what it is that they wanted to do, to set their own goals and then to go out and achieve them, which means that they hopefully the you know, that degree of, of, of achievement, sense of achievement is, is so much greater when it's your own goal that you've, you've overcome and set. So, yeah. uh, so that, I think that's what he really wanted to do. Absolutely. I think there's something very special about when you know that you've done that yourself, especially as a young person. Now, let's go back to when the award started in 1956. How has it evolved since then? I wasn't around then. Just so you, just, just, <laughs> just, just, just. I was not making any assumptions <laughs> at all. Just at wanted all. to make that absolutely clear before absolutely we start. So. No, of course not. Of course not. No, no, no. Um, but I think it's come on a, I think it's come on a, 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 I mean, a huge way. I mean, just sheer numbers of young people that get involved with it today are, is, is, is very different. And of course, when it started out as a little pilot project then I mean it was just for boys yeah um, and um, it was quite funny because I think my father was really quite chuffed that he actually then designed a, a program that was f for girls yeah and then they went no 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 we want to do the same as the boys so they <laughs> so, uh. so then they amalgamated the two the two programs basically Amazing. but um, and, uh, and and just that spread around the world I mean actually quite early on I mean it was in the 60s when when places like Australia and Hong Kong and others began to to take it up and, and start running with it as well and and um, and so and here we are today in, in 130 countries around the world it's 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 just extraordinary it's staggering when you think about that how many have taken that on and made it their own um, and what do you plan to do to build upon the legacy that Prince Philip has left? Well, it would be great if we can just continue to, to, to sustain it, but also to give many more young people those opportunities. Mm. You know, and, and, and as the name becomes uh, better known and, and, and if we can create the right sort of, that right environment in more countries that, that you know, appreciating what non-formal education learning can do for young people and, and that, you know, learning outside of the classroom is, is, isn't a distraction, but can be positively advantageous for young people. And hopefully parents and teachers will feel more confident about, uh, about supporting it. And if that happens, then I think that there'll be more people providing those activities, which will be great for young people, but I think also the skills and experiences that they'll learn in future life, hopefully will stand them in really good stead. Yeah, I think there's a key thing though, you say non-formal education learning, because there are many kids where the classroom isn't their strongest bit and they find this new confidence going out doing the exp expedition and going on this amazing adventure. And it's amazing to see them grow in that confidence as well. You, absolutely, and, 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 they, and they learn it by doing it. And that's, that's, that's the great thing. Yeah. And, and I think that what's been, Really interesting. I mean, you know, sadly, the pandemic has had an impact on a lot of young people's lives. But but those skills and experiences of you know that, that normal are absolutely constant. So uh, and and those young people that have have been involved in it throughout this period, you know, I think they've come through it a great deal stronger and and uh, uh, and, and 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 had a, in a sense a slightly better experience for it, which is fantastic. And we can do that for more young people in the future. Then that's even better. Now, can you give me any examples of the award at work that have stayed with you? Oh gosh, um, uh, uh, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Take one or two. I mean, crikey, I mean, where to start? I mean, it's it's. I I mean, one of the things that that I've enjoyed doing since I got involved with it is, has really been trying to to push the boundaries of where the award works, mm. um, uh, on the basis that that. You know, it really can work for anybody. So, so taking it to places that that uh, that young people don't wouldn't perhaps otherwise get involved. And I remember once, um, we, we we introduced it to a. Um, a small charity that works in India with with homeless kids in, in and street kids in, in India, um, because there were lots of charities working with these kids, but there wasn't a, a framework to in order to let them progress and and, and improve. Um, so the, we we set up this project with the Salam Balak Trust, and then years later I was at an event in New York, and there was a young man there taking photographs of the event, and he was wearing his gold pin, and I went, oh, that's it. you got your gold. I said, yes. where, where did you do that? I said in India. Oh, I said, so was that through school? He said, no, it was through the Salam Balak Trust. And he was a street kid. And this trust picked him up. He got involved in the award. He developed photography as a skill. And here he was on assignment in New York working for National Geographic. Oh, my goodness. And so and the award is basically what just kind of elevated him up to become what he is today. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's amazing. That, that, I mean, as, all right, as stories go, you picked a great one. Oh, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, now, the award is a large part of Prince Philip's legacy, but he will be remembered for many things, one of which is his pioneering work in conservation. And it's true, sir, that the Duke's passion for conservation continues through many of the award participants as they choose conservation work as part of their voluntary service through the award. Is that not right? That's absolutely correct, yes. I mean, lots of young people get out there and, and do something for their, their communities, but certainly for the environment as well. And, and lots of people do do, in a sense, environmentally related projects as well, especially at the residential, gold, gold residential level. Lots of people travel abroad to go and do work with, with all sorts of different organisations and, and trusts and animals. And so, and it's, it's just brilliant watching that imagination, you know, that, that, you know, okay, I've got to do this, you know, let, let's come up with something really imaginative. So, uh, um, and it's, it's, it's brilliant seeing that and a lot of young people are really passionate about the environment around them. So here's an opportunity to go out and learn. Now, all over the world, young people are continuing Prince Philip's conservation work as part of their voluntary service section of the award. So let's take a look at some of the inspirational projects happening today. I think it's important for every faction in conservation to realise that we are all part of the same popular conservation movement. And that in spite of difference, differences of emphasis within the movements, our only hope of making any impression on public, industrial or government opinion and outlook is to do our homework and to, our, and to do our best to work together. Prince Philip was a man ahead of his time in many ways, but none more so than his advocacy for conservation and wildlife protection. As consort to the Queen, he traveled the world visiting 143 countries and developing a deep understanding of the need to protect our planet. As the first president of the World Wildlife Fund, he was part of a pioneering movement to preserve the world's ecosystem. It was the start of a lifelong passion for environmentalism and around the world, his legacy continues as thousands of award participants engage in crucial conservation work. In New Zealand, the Duke of Edinburgh's Hillary Award allows young people to complete their bronze, silver or gold with an environmental and sustainable focus, their Kakariki journey. Hi everyone, my name's Lara. I live in Auckland, New Zealand and I'm currently completing my silver Kakariki journey for my Duke of Ed Award. As a sailor and someone who's grown up living no more than five minutes from a beach, ocean conservation is super important to me and that's why I've chosen to do beach cleanups as my service. In the past few months, I've picked up 73 litres of rubbish from my local beaches with the goal of collecting 100 litres by the end of May. Looking back on all the rubbish I've collected has helped me realise that while these issues we're trying to tackle may seem huge, everyone can make a difference. As another aspect of my Duke of Ed Award, I've been focusing on bush conservation. This involves volunteering at my local reserve, which means watering a set amount of plants every few days, going to working bees, planting, and even making posters. Working on this project has been great, and the community involved with restoring the reserve is made up of truly amazing people doing great things. In Kenya, the government has committed to planting 1.8 billion trees by the year 2022 and award participants are on hand to help make this a reality. Award centres across the country will plant 1.5 million trees over the three years, with young people coming together to help secure the future of the planet. We are currently doing silver and we are planting trees today um, for the honour of Prince Philip. Hi, my name is Natasha Rodi from Nairobi, Kenya. I am a Bronze Award participant to the President's Award Kenya and today we are here at Lukenya Academy. Our goal is to plant about 3 million trees and the reason we are planting trees is just to have a better future, have a greener future and also to improve our climate change. Yes. Over in Sri Lanka, Bronze Award holder and award leader Shanjeevan Amala Nathan is leading the charge in local conservation efforts. Hi, I'm Sanjeevan from Sri Lanka. In 2018, I got my bronze award and now I'm currently working on my goal. In my learning process, I got to know Sri Lanka is facing so many marine problems that I want to give solution for those problems. There I co-founded Ocean Biome. Ocean Biome is a community of next generation ocean advocates 
to solve the real problems in the ocean and motivates the upcoming generation to protect the ocean ecosystem. With the help of youth clubs, sports clubs, environmental organizations, government and non-government organizations, we did beach cleanups. After that, we shredded all those plastic and we are building big skeleton models through recycled plastic, which can be used for education and awareness purpose. For the next level, we are planning to expand this movement to the national and international level. I'm very proudly say that the award has made me what I am today. Climate change and the loss of biodiversity pose a very serious challenge to our planet. But the award once again proves the unlimited potential of young people when they come together to solve a problem. It's so great to see you actioning Prince Philip's passion for protecting our environment. He once said, if nature doesn't survive, then neither will man. And it's really moving to see young people coming together to make a difference like this. And it's never been more challenging to make a difference than over the last year. The entire world was ground to a halt as we battled the COVID pandemic. But you have risen to the challenge, finding ways to get out there, help others and complete your awards despite the restrictions. You've been doing some truly incredible work. In fact, in the Bahamas, participants have shopped for elderly people who could not leave their homes. In China, young people have been making PPE masks to help stop the spread of the virus. And in New Zealand, they've been creating intergenerational friendships by reading to lonely elderly people over Zoom. So let's take a look at some of the things that you've been up to over the last year. And if you pay close attention, you might just see a familiar face. Oh, you've all been busy. Uh, now, if you're paying close attention as well, you would have seen me pop up when I was on my expedition, which graciously they showed for a second. So thank you for that. Uh, now, uh, Prince Philip wanted to empower young people to challenge themselves to discover their true potential. And every single one of you taking part in this award is doing just that. Inspiring stories are unfolding every day. And we want to take a moment to go a little deeper into one of these remarkable stories that took place in Zambia.
I think the award program is so important because it exposes young people to real challenges with real consequences. It helps young people become more confident in their decision making and helps them become more creative in thinking of ways of how to solve their problems. The plan, do and review cycle is so important because it provides participants with a systematic approach to achieving their goals. For the Adventurous Journey section of the award program, it is important for participants to sit down and plan and set themselves goals even before they try to attempt the actual adventurous journey. So I signed up for navigation because I was really good with math and coordinates. I feel like planning it gave you, like in your head, you know, you knew what was going to happen. And we'll discuss as a group how we would feel about getting lost or you not know, having our food or just someone getting injured because it just helps you to plan and see which way you're going to go, the mistakes that you're going to make and how you can find a way out of them. During the reflection, and the review process, the participants have time to sit down and actually reflect on what is happening around them, why people made the decisions that they made. It is important that this reflection takes place as soon after the adventurous journey because then the experiences are still fresh in their minds and their feelings are still fresh in their hearts. The reflections are always happening, even after the two days that we stayed but the final reflection was when I felt like you really need to be surrounded by pe people who will lift you up during the award and be positive to you because when you get lost when it's raining when it's cold you need people to lift you up and not bring you down and you realize that okay for a navigator you realize that you're holding people's lives in your hands and you're leading them somewhere when you've been working for a long time and people are tired, you need to consider that, okay, this one's not as physically fit as me, so let's slow down, let's have breaks, and you soon start to see that there's more to this world than yourself, and you start to think about other people more. There's a growing awareness that not all learning happens inside the classroom. Once pushed outside their comfort zones, participants are able to learn about themselves, learn about others, and learn about the environment. And I have found my place, my passion, and my purpose in the world because I know who I am through what I've learned in those experiences. What an incredible story. But you know, it doesn't end there because Mukumbi is, of course, here today as part of our audience. It's great to have you here, Mukumbi. Yeah, I love that. That's right, celebrate yourself. You did great then. Uh, now, you talked about the importance of planning your adventurous journey. Were there any surprises that you face as a group? Yes, actually. Like you found a dead goat, I had a missing chicken. So we walked <laughs> our 20Ks, reached camp, and found out that we had left our chicken in the freezer um, at base camp. And that was quite a surprise because we had planned to eat chicken and it wasn't there. <laughs> so that was the one of the most shocking things because the food is included in our plan, but I think we overlooked it at the time since we were doing going. <laughs> All right, two things. Firstly, I think we can make a top trumps of Duke of Edinburgh stories because dead goat, lost chicken. I don't know who would win that. Um, two, I thought you meant an actual chicken as a pet. So thank you for clearing that. <laughs> for the both of us, because I'm pretty sure uh, the prince was thinking the same thing. Now, what do you think is the, the biggest lesson that you've learned from doing the award? I have learned that there are bigger people around me. I know I said it in the video, but I can say it again. Uh, the world does not revolve around me and the people that actually need help. I learned that through my service. You know, we get to see so many Sometimes we get so, um, what can I say, so obsessed with ourselves and we focus only on that when we don't realize that the people around us that actually need our help, being able to serve them in any small way that can change the world in so many different ways. You know, it just takes one 
person to plant a seed for the tree to grow. And that's all that we really needed to do to help people. And that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned. Mukimbi, look, I, I, I'm learning that every day. The world doesn't revolve around me. So the world doesn't revolve <laughs> around me. I'm still learning that. And that's, there's no shame in that. I love that you've been brave enough to say that. Uh, now, what sort of impact has the award made on your life? I have become more confident. Before I was quite a shy person. I didn't like to speak out. Like even during this, if I was, if it was three years ago, I probably would have ran away because I couldn't do it. But doing the award, having that chance to lead people in my navigation skills or even outside of my DOV, I was able to become more confident in that way and realize that it's okay to be afraid, but the failure is when you don't try. You know, so that's one of the biggest impacts that it's had on me. That's amazing. You've gone from being too shy to speaking in front of a prince. That's a, that's a huge <laughs> elevation. Uh, now, you, men you mentioned that uh, you are now who you are because of what you've learned during the award. So how would you describe the person that you were and how you've changed? So you've already said that you were quite shy. Is there any ways that you've changed since the award? I have become happier, you know, I felt very lonely sometimes, you know, I couldn't be free to be myself. I was, you know, I'm a small person and most of the time we're surrounded by so many other people that shine in their light, you know, they're great at different things. But I learned that everyone has their own power and their own talent that they can use. My skill was piano like you. And through playing the piano, I learned how to express myself, how to be happier and I got to grow into such a joyful person that I couldn't even believe it myself. So that's one of the things that I had. McKimby, you're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Uh, now, our audience have some burning questions for Prince Edward. So I think it's about time that we put him in the hot seat. <laughs> now, Your Royal Highness, I'm sure that you've endured some tough questions in your time, but forget that, because this could be the sternest grilling you've ever faced. Are right, you ready? Right. <clears throat> Yes, I think I'm ready. Now, Narindu, you've got an audience of a prince. Take it away. Yes, sir. What was the most important thing you learned about yourself during your award? Great question. Hmm, uh, probably that uh, actually if I stuck with it, I'd probably achieve it. Um, it which sounds, it sounds a bit trite, but actually, I mean, I think that the award is all about that. It's, it's actually being able to stick with it. There are lots of times you think, do I really want to do this? Or, or you know, and, and bits take quite a long time, but... It's, it's, it is, it's just, I think it's in, I think that's the one thing that brings out of everybody who does the award. You actually have to stick with it and, and you learn about yourself just simply because you think, no, I'm not going to let this, I am going to get there. And uh, of course, when you get there, it's a great feeling, but yeah. Uh, yeah. That is wonderful. Uh, you know, the most important thing I learned is that you definitely need to pay attention when reading the map. Because <laughs> our group started the day by going in a completely one direction and then we added an hour to our journey. And you can imagine we were the best of friends by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> Selena, what would you like to ask? If you got lost on an expenditure, what would be the three things you would want to have with you? It's weird. You only really need one thing and that's a means of communication. True. If you've got a, a telephone or a, a radio and you can communicate with the outside world, then frankly, you're probably not lost. So, because you can always call it, and, and it all goes horribly wrong when you're not allowed to communicate with the outside world or there's no signal. And that, that's, that's, when, that's when the problems occur. So it's, it, it's, you can think of all sorts of other things, but actually that is one thing I think, which is if you had a choice of anything, that's the thing I take with me. Yeah, you know what? I'm already thinking now, carry a pigeon, all right? Communication <laughs> and company. <laughs> yes. You know, efficient. It, <laughs> it, it, it is, and, and if all else fails, you can eat it as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> there you go. Three things in one. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Ichen, you're up. Hi, it's very nice to meet you, Your Royal Highness. Um, so my question is, why do you think the award is such an important part of the His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh's legacy? <sighs> I mean, there's an awful lot of, of, of his legacy. I, I, do you know, I think probably because it has had such, the award has had such an impact on so many young people's lives. Mm. And, and of course, and it's been going for such a long time that there are just simply millions of people who, who's had their lives changed. And, uh, and I think that was what was... Um, 
I think that was what was really touching about all the, all the tributes and all the memories that have come in is that actually so many people felt felt moved to 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 express how much the award meant to them and therefore and, and that connection with with my father uh, because if it hadn't been for him they, they wouldn't have done that they wouldn't have had those memories they wouldn't have had that moment um, we wouldn't all be sitting here together we wouldn't all be talking together if it wasn't for for my father so yes I think that that was I think that's why it's probably that the 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 greatest legacy because it's just spread to so many parts of the world and 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 impacted so many people's lives the breadth and the diversity listening to people talking from every faith every background every ethnic i mean it didn't really matter but this is a common common experience that everybody's had and i think that's really important absolutely and i think we all of us here are really proud to be a part of that legacy as if you've done your your gold bronze silver, whatever it is you're part of that legacy that's an amazing thing uh okay gabby it is your turn what would you like to ask your Royal Highness, why do you think the award is so impactful for young people? <clears throat> well, I, I, well, listen, just listening to well, all the things that you've done, it, it, it's all had an impact on, on your life. I think it's the very fact that we get to choose what it is that we want to do, that we can, we can shape our lives, we t can take control of our lives. But I think that along the way, lots of people learn things about themselves and things about life and, and, and have actually changed course as a result. Um, and, um, uh, you know, and some of those stories of, of, of that, that change of direction because they've just felt inspired by what they've been introduced with through the ward. I think that's, I think that's, and listen, if you've all been through an expedition of some form or other, it's, it's had an impact on your life. You know, you, you, you're never going to forget that, are you? I mean, that adventure when you get out there, you know, it, it that you're always going to remember that it's it's, it's so uh, I mean all the other experiences are all part of it but we never forget I, well I don't know anybody who's forgotten doing their expedition <laughs> I mean <laughs> that adventurous journey that that going out there and you know it's 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 that that's the impact it has and those live with you for the rest of your lives I mean I'll never forget that goat probably yeah. that it does stick with you and whether it's been a difficult journey or an easy one the pride is always the same when you complete it as well uh, now last but not least Mukumbi what is your question? Your Royal Highness, I wanted to ask what advice you would give to someone that wanted to give up on the award. Ooh. Oh, well, now that's quite interesting. Um, so, um, um, well, obviously don't, but... Um, but Because, <laughs> 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 you know, it rather spoils the point of the exercise, doesn't it, really? Um, no, it's quite interesting. If you think about all the reasons why somebody would probably give up, um, which is that actually to... Um, activities happen on the same time so I can't really make up my mind which I'm going to do or um, actually I've become rather more interested in in, um, um, in boys or rather more interested in girls and I'll give it up or, or you know just if you think of all the reasons why people don't do it and you turn around and say okay so that that's what you're going to be remembered for or I got lost on the expedition my bronze expedition and uh, you know I, I, I don't fancy doing the next one and when you point all those things out you go well is that what you want to be is that what you want to be? Is that how you want to live your life? By and, and actually, everybody goes, if faced with it, they go, no. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's trying to think of, okay, actually, what is it that I really want to achieve? I, I'm not going to get knocked down by this because something else has come in the way, actually, because that's life, isn't it? So I've actually got to try and take control of this. I've got to, I've, I've got to do this myself. And if you don't actually get to the end, you don't understand the satisfaction you get from doing it. And it's that satisfaction, we all know that. We, we've all been there. That satisfaction at the end, that sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter what you do from now on in life, you will always have that. So uh, that's why I say just just go with it. And apart from anything else, it should be fun. The moment it stops becoming fun, think of something else to do, you know. So uh, find another activity because it's supposed to be fun. That's the most important thing. Yeah, adapt, adapt. Yeah. Solid advice there. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you guys as well for your questions. That was a good work. You gave him a real yeah, brilliant. Yeah, very much. Yeah, absolutely. Proud of you all. <laughs> uh, now I think, though, it's time we let Prince Edward go and have a lie down <laughs> and recover from that ferocious grilling. Sir, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Brilliant, Reese. Well, thanks very much for doing for this and, and Thanks, guys, for all those questions, and, uh, and good luck with your awards. Brilliant.
Now, next up, we've got a very special treat. There are so many talented people completing their award today, including some truly amazing singers. And to celebrate all of you across the world, some of you wonderful singers have come together to perform in a virtual choir, recording each contribution alone and allowing us to mix everyone together to create, well, to create this. Wow, what a performance. You know, I'm so moved. I'm only slightly offended that I didn't get asked to sing. But I'll take that up with the producers at the end of the show. You know who you are. Uh, OK, though, our audience have put forth their questions to Prince Edward. But now it's time to turn the tables and see how much they know about the award with a little quiz I like to call Knowing Me, Knowing Duke. Uh-huh. I cannot. I cannot. Come on. Uh, now, the winner will get a two-night stay at Buckingham Palace with a bed and breakfast and a private audience with the Queen. Also, I made that up. That's not going to happen. But you will get bragging rights with your friends for the rest of the year, which is priceless. All right. So the game is very, very simple. I am going to ask participants a series of questions with three possible answers, A, B or C. They each have three cards with those letters. And when I ask the question, they'll hold up the, rev the relevant letter with their guess. And we'll total up and see who got the most questions right at the end. So for everyone watching at home, join in as well using the quiz box next to the video and see how many you get right. Everybody are you ready? Yes. All right, let's do this. Yes. Question number one. Who was the founder of the award? Was it A, Prince Edward? Was it B, Prince Philip? Or was it C, Bear Grylls? And we're getting, we're getting. Unanimous. 
Orbeez. And it was, of course, B, it was Prince Philip. That was an easy one. All right, we're getting you off. We're getting the ball rolling a little bit. So nice work. Next question. When was the award founded? Is it A, 1950, B, 1956, or C, 1958? Ah, uh, it's more Bs. It is B, 1956. Just off by two years, Steve. Uh, next question. How many hours of voluntary service are required to complete the bronze award? Is it A, one hour a week for six months? Is it B, two hours a week for six months? Or is it C, one hour a week for nine months? Mm -hmm. Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Have a look. All right. It's like a sea of A's. Timothy is going against the curve of his B. Could he be the one to actually get it right? It's a, it's a. Sorry, Timothy. I respect you trying to go against the curve, but it was the wrong decision. It is one hour for six months. Next question. How many people take part in the award each year? Is it A, 100,000? Is it B, 250,000? Or is it C, 1 million? Some big believers in the award saying C. Christian there with the C. Yeah, cool. C, C, C. A couple of Bs. And it is C. It is one million people. One million young people across the, country, across the world doing that. Next question. How many countries and territories does the award run in? So is it A, 130? Is it B, 145? Or is it C, 147? So A, 130, B, 145, and C, 147. Many are saying A, many are saying A. We've got a couple of Cs from Narindu, Timote. Uh, I think there's a B from Christian as well. Uh, and a C as well from Selena. It's the A's. The A's have it. It's 130 territories. Now, let's see how much you know about the adventurous journey. So where did the sport of orienteering originate? Is it A, Chile? Is it B, India? Or is it C, Sweden? So where did orienteering originate? A, B, or C? A, Chile, B, India, or C, Sweden? All right. Many saying C. Timothy, I, don't, I feel like you don't believe in your answer with the face you're giving with that A, but you're sticking with it and I respect it. Um, but it was wrong. It is C, Sweden is where it originated. In fact, orienteering started around the turn of the 20th century in Scandinavia. So back then, when the, when the sport was earlier, it was the maps were very small, they were much smaller, they were in black and white and without contours to show the shape of the land. So I would stick with Google Maps if I were you guys. Uh, finally, now my final question, what is the bearing for west on a compass? Is it A, 180 degrees? Is it B, 270 degrees? Or is it C, 250 degrees? A, B or C? B, seen some Bs, seen some Bs, seen some Bs, Bs. One C from Anila, who's like, I'm not gonna go with the Bs. Unfortunately, again, Anila, follow the crowd, because it is B, it's 270 degrees. Congratulations. Now, after that round, I can reveal that the winner is Gabby with seven points. So well done, Gabriella, nice work. You smashed it, we're impressed, very, very impressed. Congratulations to you. Now, like I said, no stay at Buckingham Palace, but you do get to show off to your friends and the rest of us, which I think you can agree is pretty priceless. Now we're getting towards the end of the show, so let's take a moment to reflect. More than one million young people are taking part in the award right now. And over the years, millions more have taken part too. It has made a lasting impact on each and every one of us. It's created a truly international family that we are all a part of. So let's take a look at the memories that have been made and the benefits the award has had for award alumni all over the world. Hello, my name is Levison Wood. I'm an explorer, an author, and a photographer. I'm also a very proud uh, recipient of bronze, silver, and gold awards. My name is Emily Sinclair. I am from Bermuda, and I currently hold the bronze, silver, and gold award. Hi, everyone. This is Maylia. I am a bronze, silver, and gold award holder from Indonesia. My name is Javon Tobit from the island of Bermuda, and I am a gold award holder. Hello, my name is Barbara Simpson-Shudel. 
I'm 75 years old and the proud owner of the Duke of Edinburgh's Gold Award. Hi there, my name is Sunir Chandaria. I'm from Canada, a Gold Award holder. G'day, this is Catherine from Melbourne, Australia, and I am a Gold Award winner, which is fantastic. I have this boot as a memory from school days, and I display it proudly. To those of you who have completed your award, heartiest congratulations, and those who are continuing on the journey, I wish you all the very best and ask that you push yourself outside your comfort zone and continue to learn how much you can tackle. The award have given me self-confidence and a sense of responsibility that have served me well in all kinds of fields of activity. The Duke of Edinburgh's award is always a recommendation. Those who are still um, working for their award, I know it may be tough right now through um, every training session, every late night packing, every fear of getting lost or losing the map. Um, every sore day of walking is gonna be worth it in the end. Once again, congrats guys and well done. For anybody that has gotten the award, I feel like that is a big accomplishment because it's actually not an easy task. To anybody that's doing the award, I would recommend you to keep going persevere, get through it, and trust me, it's such a, a rewarding experience and one worth experiencing, one worth going through. To all those who have completed the award, well done, congrats, you are amazing, you're on your way to having an incredible life. For those who are still, still doing it and you're pushing through some tough times, continue to do it, even if that's one last hike like mine. You know what, it is so worth it. I can thank the award scheme for being probably the reason that I get to do what I'm doing today. It gave me the skills and the confidence to become an explorer later in life. So I wish you all the very best with your own awards. For those who finished the award, congratulations and welcome to the award alumni family. I'm so excited to hear stories from you guys and please stay safe and healthy wherever you are. And I'll see you on top. Some great memories there, and the award family look forward to making many more. Well, that's just about all the time we've got. It's absolutely flown by. But before we go, I want to let you know about a fantastic new initiative that the award is launching. It's now time for us to hand things over to you for what is a first in the history of the award. That's right, it has never, ever been done before. For the very first time, we are holding a global fundraising challenge, and we want you to get involved. So let's take a look. That's right, it's called Challenge 100. To mark the 100th year of the awards founder, the Duke of Edinburgh, we wanted you to help us celebrate all that he did for young people around the world by taking on your own Challenge 100. So, how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. Just think up your challenge activity, and it can be anything you like, from walking 100 meters on your hands, to volunteering to help 100 neighbors, to singing 100 songs. Just base it around the number 100 and get started. You can do the challenge either on your own or in a team, anything goes. Through taking part and helping to raise vital funds and awareness for the award, you can ensure that generations of future young people around the world are able to do their award. You can help them to discover their infinite potential and to become world ready. So what are you waiting for? Don't forget to share your progress on social media using the hashtag awardchallenge100. We want to see your videos, your photos, get as imaginative and creative as you like, share them with us and show everyone around the world what your challenge 100 is. You can find out more by visiting the web address at the bottom of the screen right now. To kick things off and to help you come up with some ideas, we're gonna go now to Indonesia where they're starting their challenge 100 today. Challenge 100 is goal shooting. Yay! 
This is my challenge 100, 100 km by bicycle. I love doing this because it maintains my physical fitness. Yes, I'm super excited! Yes, I'm very excited. Football is my life and a goal in the game is important. Bicycling is my hobby. I have reached 70 kilometers in a day so far. I know it will be very challenging, but it's worth trying, and I love bicycling. What a cool initiative. It's got me thinking about what I could do now. And as you can probably tell, even if you're watching remotely, I'm very physically strong. So I reckon, I don't know, 100 chin-ups, maybe by the morning, that should be pretty simple. But it's not about me, all right? In fact, let's go to you guys. What would you guys do for your Challenge 100? Narindu, I want to come to you. Any ideas what you could do for your Challenge 100? Yeah, I'm going to aim for uh, 100 hours of reading because I don't really do that much. Yes, because I think sometimes it can be hard. If you're, if you're not a natural reader, to do 100 hours of reading, that is going to be a very big challenge. Uh, Anila, what about you? Have you got any ideas for a challenge 100? I would probably learn like 100 songs on the flute because right now I know like 30, 20 to 30 songs. So yeah, I'll try to shoot for 100 songs. Okay, can you do Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss? I'm just saying, if you get some glam rock stuff on the flute, that just might surprise some people. <laughs> Figure it out, find the song, get back to me. And Itchen, what about you for your Challenge 100? My idea is to help recruit 100 youth um, around the community to help make a change. That is incredible. Some amazing examples there. Well, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun and we hope to see as many of you as possible getting involved in that. Can't wait to get online and see what you've come up with. So that's it. I'm sorry to say that we've reached the end of the show, but I've had a great time and I hope that you have as well. A massive thank you to you and each and every one of you for joining us today. Now, whether you're on your award journey right now, discovering your infinite potential or whether you're supporting young people whilst they do it, you are investing in their future and building on the phenomenal legacy that Duke of Edinburgh created through this award. And on that point, I think it's only right that we end on a note of thanks to His Royal Highness, Prince Philip. And I really do mean a physical note because we have one right here. The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award has changed the lives of young people in more than 130 countries. So to show our appreciation through the magic of television, we're going to send this note of thanks around the world. So I'm going to scrunch it up like here and we'll, we'll just see where it lands, you know. So it's a goodbye from me. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again very soon. Let's see how far I can chuck this. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Gracias. Voilà. Qui
Human Casting. 감사합니다. 다리 말 가시. 무슨 말씀?